Hi guys, our topic today is the difference between small cells and regular cells. So more specifically, that means the difference between macrocells, microcells, femtocells and picocells. In case you're new to mobile communications and you don't exactly know what a cell is, a cell in mobile networks is a coverage area that is created by the radiations of a cell tower or base station. A base station is these tall masts that you see on the roads, highways, etc. Something that looks like this in the picture. So the thing that really differentiates these cells from each other is the range that they can offer. The smallest of the cells is usually a femtocell and the largest cell is called a macrocell. So the range of a mobile cell can be anywhere from a few meters to tens of kilometers. Some mobile operators sell femtocells directly to their customers to improve the indoor network coverage. Femtocells are pretty much plug and play so all you need to do is to connect them to the power socket and to your home broadband. A mobile network primarily consists of a radio network and a core network. Of course, there are other parts of the network as well, including transport network. But just for simplicity, let's focus on radio network and core network. So if you look at this diagram here, right? So basically, femtocells or any other cells, macrocells, microcells, picocells, etc. All of these cells are part of the radio network. So all they do is that they create the network coverage so that your phone can connect to the network, to the radio network, and then the radio network is connected to the core network of a mobile network. That way all the intelligence comes from the core network in terms of what services you're entitled to use, etc, etc. So that's how you establish a connection. The connection between the base station and the core network is called backhaul, and uh, when you use a femtocell, this backhaul is provided by your home broadband because you connect a femtocell to your broadband network. Okay, so that was a bit of an overview. Let's now dive into the details to see exactly what's the difference between macrocells, microcells, femtocells, and picocells. Mobile network operators, MNOs, use base stations or cell towers to create mobile network coverage. A cell is the coverage area within which the signals of a base station can successfully reach a mobile phone. Mobile operators deploy many base stations for nationwide network coverage where each base station can have multiple cells. The cells within a mobile network can be of different sizes depending on the coverage needs. In the technical documentation of a mobile network, cells are represented by many interconnected hexagons. A group of interconnected cells is called a cluster as shown in the diagram on the right. Cells are interconnected so that when you move from one location to another, the communication on your phone can be handed over from one cell to another. That way, your call or data session can continue to work without interruptions even when you're moving. The large cells that provide the primary coverage in a mobile network are called macro cells, whereas the other smaller cells are collectively called small cells. In this diagram on the screen, we see the different types of cells within a mobile network. Femtocells are the smallest of the cells, whereas macrocells are the largest. The range of a femtocell is up to 10 meters, and the range of a macrocell is tens of kilometers. Picocells are larger than femtocells, and microcells are larger than picocells. In mobile communications, there are a few things we do, and there are a few things we try to avoid to ensure a good user experience in a cost-effective way. The core underlying principle is to ensure that we have good network coverage and capacity. Good network coverage means the cellular signals can travel successfully between the base station and the mobile devices. Good network capacity means that each mobile device trying to access the mobile network gets enough network resources, for example, bandwidth. Mobile operators have specialized teams that ensure that they keep network interference to a minimum and use technologies that best use network resources. The different sizes of cells ensure that the network coverage 
at particular frequencies stays within the boundaries or where it is needed without interfering with other cells. A large cell is more costly for a mobile operator to deploy and maintain than smaller cells. The flexibility in the size of the cell allows mobile operators to use the most appropriate cell sizes to address specific coverage gaps. Now let's have a look at this table to see the range and use cases for cells of different sizes. Femtocell has a range of up to 10 meters and it can be used in places like small offices or homes. Picocell is the next one and it has a range of up to 200 meters, so slightly bigger than the femtocell, and it can be used in shopping malls or large offices, etc. The next one after Picocell is a microcell. Microcell has a range of up to 2 kilometers and it can be used in places like streets, train stations, and densely populated buildings. And finally, the largest of the cells is the macrocell. The range of a macrocell is tens of kilometers and it can be used in places like highways, rural areas, and sparsely populated areas. Femtocells are the smallest of all cells and mobile operators often sell them as signal boosters to customers who struggle with the network coverage. Femtocells are mini base stations that can create a coverage area of up to 10 meters radius. Femtocells are plug and play devices that look similar to a broadband router. The vendors of mobile network equipment manufacture femtocells. If you struggle with your mobile network coverage, your mobile operator may be able to offer a signal booster which is actually a femtocell. But of course, it depends on your mobile operator. Unlike other cells managed and operated directly by mobile operators, femtocells are managed by the end customers. Once the customer plugs the femtocell device into a power socket and connects to the home broadband router, it creates cellular coverage within their home. The home broadband provides the backhaul connection to the femtocell device and connects it to the mobile core network. Pico cells are larger than femto cells and for mobile operators they act as mini powerhouses that can provide coverage and capacity within a radius of up to 200 meters. Unlike femto cells, Pico cells are managed and operated by mobile operators. Therefore, they require professional installation and must be connected to the main electric supply and backhaul like any regular base station. Pico cells are used in buildings like office sites or shopping malls, etc. They provide a layer of targeted network coverage in areas where the primary network signals can't reach successfully. Like other small cells, Pico cells also offer additional capacity. Therefore, they are deployed in busy locations so mobile phone users can easily make and receive calls and get decent data rates when using mobile internet. Microcells are larger than Pico cells and have a coverage range of around 2 kilometers. Therefore, they are the largest of the small cells. Microcells are managed and controlled by mobile network operators MNOs, and require the same considerations as any other regular cells including power supply and backhaul connectivity. The backhaul connects microcells to the mobile core network. Microcells can be a good solution for large buildings like uh, train stations, sporting events or concerts etc. Macro cells are the main cells that mobile operators deploy for creating their primary network coverage. They are the largest overall cells and their coverage range is tens of kilometers depending on the frequency being used. Lower frequencies can provide the most extended range. Macro cells are the ideal choice when mobile operators deploy base stations in large geographical areas with low population densities. 
In addition, macro cells are suitable for rural areas where the network traffic load is not as high as in populated areas. Macro cells are managed and controlled by mobile network operators, MNOs, and they form part of the main radio network of a mobile operator. A typical cell tower or base station can have multiple macro cells. You can download these slides and supporting information from compsbrief.com slash compsbrief hyphen products. There's also a direct link to the download page in the description below. Thanks for watching the video guys. I've written a detailed post on this topic and the link is in the description. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'm posting new videos all the time.